in Diablo 2, it can get a bit overwhelming to decide which items to use. So to continue the series covering the best items in the game, we're going to kick off the weapons with the best items for casters. Now, which of these you choose will depend on what type of caster you are, and in some circumstances, even what element you're focusing on. Starting out, we're going to hit what are probably the two most prominent caster weapons, with the Spirit Rune Word being extremely popular due to its low cost and high efficiency. With plus all skills, faster cast, hit recovery, and a few other nice mods just for the cost of Tal, Thull, Ort, and Am in a 4 socket sword. There are a few really good bases for this rune word, but getting a broadsword from Nightmare and socketing it is the safest and usually the fastest way since these cap out at 4 sockets, making it a lot harder to overshoot the required number. Though a crystal sword is the infamous base for this one, it can get a bit more finicky if you find it in the wrong spot. The other big name generic caster weapon is Heart of the Oak. More skill points, more faster cast, and it tacks on resist, replenish life, max mana, and a few other nice mods. Though it comes in at significantly more expensive with Ko, Vex, Pull, and Thull. And as far as the base, pretty much the only one worthwhile to make it in is a flail, which is farmable from certain locations, but usually I just save any four socket flails I find while taking characters through the game, since it's usually several runs in before you'll have the runes anyways. As we move along, we do have some more similarly generic but slightly different use case caster weapons in the form of the first, Wizard Spike with faster cast, massive resist, not to mention mana perks, and while it lacks plus skills, it is still a great weapon to use for safety's sake and if you need to hit an extremely high casting breakpoint. And second, we have Suicide Branch, which offers a similar massive faster cast boost, but sacrifices a chunk of the other mods for plus one to all skills. It still packs some mana and resist, just nowhere near as much as Wizard Spike. Both of these are super popular for some variants of cry barbs or spammer sorceresses, so it definitely is worth their mention. Now before we drop into the two obvious class specific categories of caster weapons, I feel it's important to note an overlooked category of caster weapon, resistance piercing. With things like Crescent Moon, Phoenix, Doom, and several others providing minus enemy resist to a specific element. These types of weapons can be quite potent when used properly, since reducing enemy resist will often provide a bigger boost than plus skills and plus damage effects, and it can be especially handy if you're already reaching the desired cast breakpoint somewhere else, or you're on a character that generally can ignore them, like say the Elementalist Druid. Element piercing weapons are available for lightning, fire, cold, and poison, and should be considered an option for your endgame builds that use any of these four elements. Into the class specific stuff, I went ahead and threw all of the orbs on here since Ashuta's Temper has a very niche use in it that provides solid faster cast and plus skills in one package, but lacks the utility of some of the other options, so it's only used in very specific subtypes of builds. Similarly, Death's Fathom is very specifically a cold sorceress option since you already get cold resist piercing from your mastery, this is one of the few situations where plus percent damage can actually be a lot more useful. Though the most popular of the unique orbs is the Oculus, mainly because people love doing magic find, and that and its good balance of resist, cast rate, skill levels, magic find like we mentioned, not to mention mana per kill. The big drawback of this weapon though is that it has a chance to cast teleport when struck, which can get annoying or risky, which is one of the reasons I generally don't put it up front in build guides, even if it's worth mentioning, since it can bite a player in the butt, especially if they're new. That said, Tal Rasha's is probably one of my favorite sleeper items on this list, and the only set item here, since even though it looks mediocre at first glance, you start putting on more parts of the set, and it starts providing elemental piercing for fire and lightning while boosting cold damage, and it even slaps in plus one to all skills, and the partial set bonuses on many of the other parts of the set are pretty good too, making it a reliable choice for general use, even if it's not going to be best in slot outside of a few fire sorceress builds. Now, into the mostly necro end of casters, we'll start with one that has a few other uses as well, and that's Death's Web. It's mostly known for being the go-to poison necro wand, and pairs nicely with Trangul's head for a lot of negative poison resist, but it does also have a generic plus two all skills that works for any character, as well as a mana and life per kill that can be handy, though it is mostly just used on that necro build that uses Poison Nova, which is kind of how it became so reliable for farming every area in the game. As far as the bone side of the Necromancer, we have the White Wand. I thought of throwing some of the other unique alternatives on here, but honestly, this one is significantly easier to get, and it's honestly really, really cheap. The one I have here is a high-end found wand, but you can shop a plus three bone spear wand, which is the desirable base, that's your main go-to, from normal difficulty Drognan. 
and it's super easy and it's not super cheap because it is plus skills, but it's nice to get. It does beat out pretty much any unique option for Bone Necros too. On to the summoner end of things for the Necromancer, which I'm including as a pseudo caster. We have two wands to look at, the most popular being Arm of King Leoric, which falls into a similar category as Oculus in that it has a ton of great mods, unfortunately paired with the drawback. In this case, Bone Prison when struck sometimes, which can get you killed if you're trapped with enemy mobs and you don't have a teleport option. But in this case, I'd say the plus skills are usually going to be worth it over the other alternate. That alternative option being the Karen Shard. A lot less potent, but it lacks the drawback of the Arm of King Leoric. Specifically speaking, both of these are fine and will be common options for mid game, but as you get into the end game, your equipment choices for a summoner will actually tend towards favoring a look of commander necromancer rather than a pure summoner or caster oriented one, and use more more aura based functions that would be out of place in this list, at least for me. But we have a whole guide for that linked to at the end of this video, which if you haven't guessed it, we have reached. So did I miss your favorite caster weapon? Should I have included infinity on here since it's my favorite Nova Sorceress weapon? Or maybe leaf since it's one of the best starter weapons in the game? Mention it down below and as always, keep gaming, have fun and peace out. This has been Alzrath. Bye.